The Balloon Corps is often seen as just a footnote in history. However, the Balloon Corps was one of the most influential military advancements of all time. From the first balloons used in the Civil War to the Zeppelins that marked the British skies, balloons were a staple of 1800s to 1900s warfare. The primary use of these balloons were to watch over the lands and observe for any enemy activity, notify their troops, and guide their artillery fire. They soar up to 500 feet in the air, allowing for a 15 mile range of vision. It's this vision that makes them this high priority target. But why do we not have them today? And why was balloon combat almost forgotten? Before we dive into the history, we wanted to see the differences in thoughts about Zeppelins between an average student and someone who was in the Navy. Are you familiar with Zeppelins? Um, somewhat. I know that they're pretty much giant blimps that were used for war, and they, they suck. Well, why do they suck? Well, they're pretty much just giant balloons filled with gas that's super flammable and just easily be shot down. Well, did you know that the United States used to use Zeppelins and b hot air balloons in war? Yeah, I During know they early World War used I? Used to. Yeah. Yes, used to. <laughs> but they realized, um. <laughs> yeah. Alright, Mr. Allen, what can you tell me about uh, blimps and balloons? Um. I mean, they fly over football games and other sporting events, and people like to go on hot air balloon rides. And as someone in the Navy, can you tell me a little bit about uh, possibly like the Navy's interaction with balloons or um, anything of that nature? When I was in, you know, this was in the 90s, so when I was in, we mainly used balloons. It was for like weather purposes, you know, for we'd send a balloon up when we were out at sea and we could get kind of a, a good idea of the weather, you know, in the outlying areas. But, you know, now that we have technology, that, that kind of thing's been, you know, kind of replaced. All right. Have you ever been uh, in a hot air balloon and been in the vicinity? I, I, never, I never have. Mm. But where do the balloons come from? How far back? Do they date? The Civil War, America's bloodiest conflict. In this time of war, many new technologies and abilities were sought after. Things like the Gatling gun, or even the submarine and its torpedoes. And the invention of the hour, the war balloon. Now. We know what you're thinking. Balloons might not sound like they'd be over a war zone, but balloons were a defining feature of war between 1861 and 1937. But how could a harmless balloon be a machine of war? In the beginning, the balloons were used by America's first balloonist, Thaddeus Lowe. These balloons were only there to entertain at circus events. However, Lowe thought they could be more. Lowe floated on his balloons directly over to the White House and demanded that his balloons be used in the war efforts, and Lincoln happily agreed. Thus, the first balloon corps was made consisting of eight balloons and America's first aircraft carrier, a floating dock for balloons to land on. Balloons were used simply as reconnaissance tools by the Union Army to spy and identify Confederate forces. And at the end of the Civil War, balloons faded into history. However, they would make a reappearance. World War I. The German bombing of London was ferocious. The sounds of children yelling for their parents and the sounds of feet running to the nearest shelter are typical noises to be heard during these bombings. The smell of burning city and black smoke filled the fair. The heat from the fire is all around the people running for their lives. And the sight of the German war zeppelins over the horizon, a monolith of destruction on the London skyline, 
the Zeppelin was indeed a beacon of German terror. The United States also used Zeppelins and balloons during World War I. The Fort Omaha Balloon School was used during the early times of the Great War before planes became the ideal air transport. The structure was rarely used before the war, but once the U.S. knew they would become part of World War I, they used the facility as a balloon school. United States Airmen went through the balloon school, and many of them went through the training there. It was soon shut down in 1917 due to the terrible weather conditions in the area. Lieutenant Gillies and Colonel William C. Farnham were in a balloon one day when there was a very strong wind at 55 miles per hour. It blew the balloon so much that it was spinning. Gillies hit his head on a trapeze bar and Farnham broke his nose on the basket. Their parachutes were tangled, so they had to be pulled down by other soldiers. After the incident, Farnham wrote, The Germans shut down our balloons frequently and regularly. They could not ignore us because we were too good at spotting their activities. When the balloon was hit, it always burned and fell. Hence, the observer got the hell out of there as soon as the winch man below yelled jump. Not many observers were lost on the Western Front. Students first learning to use the balloons were the first of their kind, and the balloons had to hold parachutes for each passenger in case there was a puncture or the balloon burst into flames, usually caused by static electricity. Private Herbert described the life of a balloonist at the front lines. Shelled a machine gun by day, bombed by night, fighting off aerial attacks with machine guns and automatic rifles, frantically carrying 200 pound hydrogen cylinders on shoulders to inflate another balloon after one has been shot down. Personnel weakened by inhaling phasogen or chloride gas, suffering from dysentery, soaking wet from almost continuous rain, uniforms crawling with cooties, eating maggoty food. In some cases, the balloons were actually used for defenses to protect the cities from bombing run. They were known as barrage balloons, and they were deployed above the height of operation of planes. The heavy metal cables would be strung below the balloons, forcing enemy aircraft to avoid colliding with them, as stated by writer Alex Arbuckle. This method of defense protected London from numerous bombing attempts. However, these were still balloons, and they can easily be popped or destroyed. Filled with helium, the balloons would easily ignite from the smallest of sparks, but this didn't make them easy targets. They would often be surrounded with anti-air artillery to shoot down any balloon busters, which were planes designed for neutralizing enemy balloons and surrounded them with decoy balloons. They were well defended, so most balloon busters attacked alone. If the balloon was shot down, the operator in the balloon had a parachute and they could easily fix or build new balloons to take the previous one's place. So, if balloons were so effective in instilling fear and terror, why don't we see them today? May 6, 1936. The Zeppelin Hindenburg goes up in flames and kills 36 people. This disaster was one of the first of its kind ever filmed on camera. The Hindenburg marked the end of the Zeppelin and the rigid airship in war. But, despite all of this, in the consumer world, blimps and Zeppelins can be seen still on the skies. The most famous of these is the Goodyear blimp. While the Goodyear blimp will never be used in wartime, it is a reminder of a time in which balloons were all over the world. From today all the way back to the Civil War, 
balloons have made their impact on warfare, industry, and on the entire world. The balloons were merely only a step in the staircase of technology we humans are always climbing. As we look for new technologies that may propel humans into the heavens, let us not forget the history of this amazing feat.